In this video, we gonna talk about what Derrick James had to say on the reason why Errol Spence lost to Terrence Bud Crawford. Was it that he was weight drained? Was it the rib injury? What was going on with Errol Spence? Well, we gonna find out in this video from Derrick James' mouth, his trainer. But before we do that, make sure that y'all hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and at the end of the video, make sure that y'all comment because I want to hear what y'all got to say about this. So, man, the fight that everybody had been asking for for about four or five years, it finally went down at the end of July. But a lot of people don't have closure because we didn't expect Errol Spence to go in there and look like he did. You know, most people that you ask, I would say probably 95% of people thought that that fight was going to be a close fight. Maybe late in the fight, we were going to get a knockout, but didn't nobody see neither fighter dominating like they did. And we had never seen Terrence Crawford dominate anybody like he did Errol Spence. And of course, we never seen Errol Spence get dominated by any fighter. So a lot of people were thrown off when they saw what was going down in the ring on July the 30th. And afterwards, a lot of people had a whole lot of speculation on why Errol Spence looked the way that he did. You know, it was a lot of people saying that he was weight drained and he wasn't the same because it was just too hard for him to make 147. We know that he came off an almost 16 month layoff. During that time, him and Terrence Crawford was going back and forth in negotiations. Terrence Crawford pulled out and he fought somebody else while Errol Spence sat around and he didn't fight nobody. In the meanwhile, Errol Spence's team in the PBC was trying to get him to fight Keith Thurman. Now, if he had a fought Keith Thurman, they had agreed that that fight was going to be at 154 pounds. So a lot of people hearing that, they speculated, okay, well, Errol Spence can't make 147 no more. Eventually, Terrence Bud Crawford came back around and they made the fight at 147, of course, because it was for undisputed. So EJ had to do what he had to do to make the weight. Now, now, like I said, after they seen Bud Crawford dominate EJ, a lot of people were saying that he was weight drained. You could tell he was weight drained. His legs wasn't under him. We seen EJ getting dropped with jabs and everything like that. And then we heard other things that Errol Spence had a bad rib injury and he did not spar for the last six weeks of training camp. So that could have been an issue. Now, before y'all get to crying in the comments, hey, he making excuses. These are not excuses that I'm making. I'm just telling y'all some of the things that people was coming up with trying to figure out why Errol Spence looked the way that he did. And then we all know we had the YouTube neurological surgeon come out and say that Errol Spence suffering from brain damage that he had from the car accident. And they went through all of the signs that shows you, right, in their words, that he is suffering some type of brain damage, right? His speech patterns and things like that. So, like I said, we've heard a whole lot of things. But the main issue, what people were saying, why Errol Spence looked the way that he did is because he stayed at 147 too long and he was weight drained. As far as all of that, I've always said, I can't make no excuse for Spence because he never came out and made no excuse. He never came out and said the weight was an issue. He never came out and spoke on a rib injury. He never came out and spoke on anything. Nor did Derrick James, nor did anybody from Errol Spence's immediate team, like anybody that he trained with or any of his coaches. Nobody came out and said anything. So I said, well, if they not saying nothing, I can't say nothing. But yesterday, Derek James, he did an interview and he spoke about all of this. And I'm gonna let y'all hear what Derek James had to say about this situation. With the rematch, what's what's the talks about? I know you always say, you know, I, leave that I, I don't know, I don't know anything beat. about it. I don't know, I, I don't know anything about it. I don't know uh, nothing. Not yeah. even a hint of maybe going to the uh, rematch at one fifty. Oh, I mean, well, I mean that that part. I mean, I'm sure they already, you know, they already signed that or whatever. And, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't know anything about that either. Mm -hmm. But I just know what they talked about. At 154, what can we expect from, from Spence, you know, facing uh, you know, You'll see him, you'll see him, you know, he won't be so drained, he won't be so mm -hmm. depleted or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you'll see, you know, it's, it's, that that wasn't I mean, that wasn't the issue, you know what I'm saying? Crawford fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. He fought, had a great, great game plan, right? Mm -hmm. And so, give it to him by his coach. 
So it's not like, I mean, you know, he was the better guy that day. That's uh -huh. like. So that was Derrick James. Now, Derrick James can confuse a lot of people because, as you heard, at first he started off and he said, well, you know, at 154, Errol Spence, he won't be so drained, he won't be so depleted. So that means that he was drained and depleted, didn't it? But then Derrick James, he comes back and say, well, that was not the issue in the Terrence Crawford fight because but he had a great game plan and he was just better on that night. Him and his coach, they had a great game plan and he was just a better fighter. And then later on in that interview, when they was asking Derrick James, was he surprised about how good Bud Crawford was? And he said, well, no, nah, he was what I expected him to be. He said, the only thing is it wasn't Bud Crawford. It wasn't nothing that he did. It was Errol Spence. It was all on Spence. It wasn't really Bud. So it's confusing when you hear Derrick James talk about this situation because it seems like that James is contradicting himself. One point you hear him say, well, you know, Bud was just a better fighter. Him and his coach came up with a great game plan. And then he comes back and say that it wasn't nothing that Bud was doing special. It was Errol Spence. So it's kind of confusing what Derrick James is really saying because you still really don't get no clarity. Was he weight drained at all? Could that have been an issue? Because I know, right? And I'm not making no excuses for Errol Spence, like I said, because they not making no excuses for him. But I know if you're weight drained, right, and you're dehydrated, you can't perform to the best of your ability, right? You can't perform nowhere near to the best of your ability. So if that was an issue, that was an issue and a factor in the fight if he was weight drained. Now, if he wasn't weight drained, it wasn't an issue. And I also want to know what Derrick James means by saying, well, it wasn't nothing that Bud Crawford did special. It was Errol Spence. Now, a lot of people are saying that also because you like, well, we ain't never seen Bud look that special against nobody. Even when he fights C-level competition, he don't dominate them like he did Errol Spence. And we ain't never seen Errol Spence look the way that he did against the top competition. Now, another thing that I want to address is that a lot of news is now coming out that Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence have confirmed that they're going to fight at 154 pounds now. That now Terrence Crawford is agreeing to fight Errol at 154. And they're getting this off of what Derrick James said in this interview. But if you hear Derrick James, he never confirmed anything. He just was like, well, I don't know nothing about all of that. If anything, they've already signed or they already talked about fighting at whatever weight division. But he never confirmed anything. He kind of just kind of went around it, right? And he says, at the end of the day, I don't know about none of that. I just know that they've talked about it and that they've talked about the weight. And he kind of left it at that, right? So we still don't even know if Bud is going to agree to fight him at 154. You know, everybody's coming out with this news, but Derrick James really didn't even confirm that. He really didn't say anything. So we don't know what's going to go down if they even going to have a rematch. Yes, they supposed to have a rematch, but people need to realize that if Terrence Crawford, if he sticks to saying that they got to have the fight at 147, and Errol Spence can't make 147, well, it ain't going to be no fight because that's a loophole that Terrence Crawford can use to wiggle his way out of a rematch. But honestly, I think that Terrence Crawford really don't have no choice but to rematch Errol Spence because if you look at the money situation, we all know that's what he's after. Ain't no other fights on the table. He's not getting the Canelo fight. The only reason he was acting a fool in the first place in the rematch negotiations with Errol Spence and started demanding that the fight happen at 147 is because he wanted Spence to say no to the rematch and he thought he was going to be able to move on and fight Canelo. But that ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? Canelo ain't fighting him. Canelo ain't wasting his time on no Terrence Crawford. Canelo got much bigger fish to fry than Bud Crawford. So that's not happening. So what other fights are out there for Bud Crawford if he's saying that he not willing to fight Jamel Charlo, right? And Tim Zhu ain't really no big fight. 
So the only other big fight out there for him, if he's not willing to fight Jerron Ennis either, the biggest fight is the Errol Spence fight. Even though a lot of people saying that they don't want to watch the rematch, but it's still bigger than any of those other fights. It's bigger than the Tim Zhu fight. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't really got no choice because we all know that Bud is chasing the bag. He didn't say that it's about money at this point in his career. So the biggest money fight for him right now is a rematch with Errol Spence, even though I don't feel that the rematch is going to even do the numbers that the first fight did. But hey, it's still going to do numbers to get him a bag more than he going to get with anybody else. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all feel about this whole situation. I want to hear from y'all. Drop a comment in the comment section. Do y'all think it's going to go down? Do y'all think the rematch is going to be at 154? And if it is at 154 pounds, do y'all think it's going to look any different from the first fight? Make sure that you hit my like button, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel, and y'all already know how I do. Diego talking that boxing again, and I'm gone.